Hi, this is Manos Berlakis from Minneapolis Heart Institute. It is my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Lorenzo Azzalini from San Raffaele Hospital in Milan, who is going to present case 53 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. Lorenzo. Thank you very much, Manos, for your introduction. I also present you on behalf of Mauro Carlino that couldn't be here with me. So this is a case about rotational atherectomy in the subadventitious space uh, to allow chronic total occlusion recanalization. There are three learning objectives here, a troubleshooting algorithm of uncrossable lesion during CTO-PCI, how to perform rotational atherectomy in the subadventitial space in CTO-PCI, and what are the possible complications and how to avoid and treat them. This is the story of a 60 years old man with history of hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and COPD, as well as uh, coronary artery disease and severe uh, peripheral artery disease. He just undergone uh, two drug eluting stent implantation on the mid-LAD, and now the patient presents with residual inferior wall ischemia on myocardial perfusion imaging and is uh, then admitted for RCA CTO PCI. This is the baseline uh, angiogram of the RCA CTO. The occlusion is very long with an ambiguous proximal cap and good uh, collaterals uh, from the uh, LAD uh, through the septum. And according to the hybrid algorithm, a retrograde approach is chosen. This is a corsair microcatheter uh, plus a, a Sheehan wire uh, surfing the septal collateral, going all the way back uh, to in the distal RCA. And then we set up for reverse card. However, uh, we encountered a spot of very focal uh, resistant tissue that could have been probably calcium that could not be overcome with uh, first uh, we try with a uh, pilot 200 uh, wire that was knuckle then we knuckle on the second images <coughs> image here the courser itself and we also tried modified carlino technique uh, with a retrograde contrast injection from the microcatheter in the mid rca nothing worked at this point we consider performing rotation atherectomy however the integrated microcatheter to allow uh, guide wire exchange uh, for the rotor wire could not cross. So, what could we do at this point? So, what is the troubleshooting algorithm of uncrossable lesion during CTO PCI? First, uh, you have to consider to increase support, for example, with a mother and child system, but this was not possible because this uh, was a retrograde procedure. We tried uh, a knuckle with a stiff part of the guide wire and we failed. As we fail with the modified Carlino technique, and also we try to perform external crash, advancing a wire in parallel to the first guide wire, integrately, and to perform external plaque modification, but we couldn't advance any uh, small balloon to perform this. So you know, we we're left with laser, but this has problem of availability in many cath lab, and we were also concerned about the increased risk of perforation in this setting, and we also considered tornus, but since we had a problem of support uh, due to the disease proximal RCA, we evaluated that this uh, wouldn't work, and so we proceeded with rotational atherectomy. And this uh, video here shows you the rotor wire in the subadventitial space within the vessel architecture, and rotational atherectomy performed in the subadventitial space. And at a certain point, now you can see the rotor burr overcoming the spot of focal resistance uh, the resistance previously encountered. How we perform, do we perform rotational atherectomy in the subadventitial space in CTO PCI? First of all, we must use a small burr 1.25 because we are in a very uh, thin uh, layer of tissue. And then we use a regular standard uh, rotoblator um, instruction with a pecking motion, conventional speed 160, 180,000 uh, RPM. An important thing. Uh, is that the, uh, by the wire does not need to be in the distal trilumen, we must absolutely confirm that uh, the situation of the guide wire is within the vessel architecture throughout the occlusion. Otherwise, we have a very high risk of perforation. And this picture here shows you the uh, differences between rotational atherectomy in the trilumen in a conventional lesion and uh, rotational atherectomy in the subadventitial space, in, as in this case, in a CTO. The balloons now cross after having performed rotational atherectomy, and then we re-entered into the anti-grade guiding catheter from the retrograde side, and we then performed conventional PCI with implantation of four drag eluting stent, uh, 
from PDA to osteal RCA, and we also perform STAR on the posterior lateral branch, and this is the final result. Important point is to discuss about the possible complication of rotational atherectomy and uh, how to avoid and treat them. The first and most uh, dreaded complication is perforation. We need to confirm wire position in the vessel architecture, this is absolutely mandatory, and we also need to be familiar with coils, uh, cover stand implantation, pericardiosynthesis, and ping pong technique. Other complications of rotational atherectomy are uh, atroventricular block and slow flow, but these are not concerns in CTO PCI because the vessel is already occluded, and these phenomen phenomena are due to embolization of distal material. Another uh, problem that, that in this setting is uh, expected to be extremely rare is burr entrapment. The burr in this case moves along a low resistant cleavage plane so we don't really expect to have this problem although data in the literature is uh, lacking. In this case uh, we can proceed if we have an entrapped burr we can proceed with parallel wiring that's some minimal space and ballooning to uh, retrieve the burr using also mother and child catheter etc. So the take-home messages here is that subadventitial space in a, is an environment where devices can be safely manipulated within the limit of the very resistant adventitial tissue. Rotational atherectomy performed in the dissection uh, is safe as long as the wire position in the vessel architecture is confirmed. Perforation specifically associated with the rotational atherectomy in this setting is expected to be extremely improbable if proper technique is used. Nevertheless, we must uh, own specific equipment and skills in the cath lab when any rotational atherectomy procedure is performed. Thank you, Lorenzo. That's an amazing case. A um, couple of questions. How did you get the roto wire down? The microcatheter couldn't go, but could you be able to advance the roto wire by itself through the occlusion? Yes, this is important. an important point. Uh, we uh, advanced the microcatheter up to the point that uh, where we, we actually managed to do so, and then we carefully advanced the rotor wire as far uh, as we could within the occlusion, although we have to consider the, the rotor wire is uh, difficult to maneuver. Another uh, in technique that you can apply here is to cut part of the radio pack tip of the rotor wire in order to be able to come as close as possible to the occlusion, but this is already off-label, Manos. Perfect. No, I think it was a phenomenal case. Again, obviously, this is not something you're going to use on your everyday cases, but it's a useful tool to have in desperate cases where you've tried everything like you did in this case and didn't work. I think in the US environment, uh, there's possibly a little more availability of laser who might be a little easier to use, but I think it worked out excellent and it's something very good to know. So thank you very much. Thank you.